This video walks through a practice question on trip distribution. As I read through the question, I'll highlight any key terms and information so that we can easily identify and refer back to these later. The Southwest Sydney Transportation Study Area has been divided into four large districts, traffic zones. The following data has been compiled to understand the trip distribution throughout Southwest Sydney area. The relationship between travel time and the friction factor associated with travelling from one traffic zone to another is described in the following table. Part A. Determine the trip distribution for the region by applying the gravity model. Complete only one iteration of column factoring and row factoring. And Part B. When do we achieve a converged distribution pattern that we can use for the rest of the four-step planning process? What criteria do we normally use? Let's now take a closer look at part A. We are asked to determine the trip distribution using the gravity model. The gravity model describes the macroscopic relationships between places, and it has been inspired from Newton's law of universal gravitation. The gravity model assumes that the desire to travel between two places increases if there is productive activity at either location, but declines with increasing distance, time and cost between them. In this formula, PI is the number of productions from zone I, AJ is the number of attractions to zone J, and FIJ is a friction factor that measures impedance from zone I to zone J. We apply the gravity model by means of a trip matrix or origin destination matrix. The cells of each row I contain the trips originating in that zone, which have as destinations the zones in the corresponding columns. Tij is the number of trips between origin I and destination J. For example, in row 1, T11 is the number of trips between zone 1 and zone 1. T12 is the number of trips between zone 1 and zone 2, and so on. The sum of all the trip values in row 1 gives us P1, which is the number of productions from zone 1. From the question, we are given that this is 1000. In this way, we also know the values for P2, P3 and P4. If we look down each column, the sum of these trips is equal to the number of trips attracted to that zone. For example, the sum of T11, T21, T31 and T41 gives us all the trips being attracted to zone 1, which is represented by A1. Once again, we know the attractions for each zone, so we can populate these figures in the table. Next, we need to convert the travel time matrix into a friction factor matrix. This is normally done using a function of travel time, which is described in the table on the right. For example, all the trips with a travel time of 1 have a friction factor of 2. Looking at our travel time matrix on the left, there are no trips that have a travel time of 1. Moving on to the next column, we know that all the trips with a travel time of 5 have a friction factor of 1.30. There are several entries in the travel time matrix that correspond to this. In fact, this means that all the intrazonal trips have a friction factor of 1.30. We populate the friction factor matrix accordingly. Once this is done, we return to the table on the right and continue the process until our matrix is fully populated. We can now start calculating trips using the gravity model equation. We will work through calculations for trips from zone 1 to zone 2 and zone 2 to zone 3. The gravity model formula is shown here. In calculating the trips from zone 1 to zone 2, i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 2. 
The number of trips between zones 1 and 2, V12, is therefore P1 times A2 times F12 divided by the sum of total attractions to zone J multiplied by the trips from zone 1 to zone J for each J. We can then go ahead and expand the denominator. Substituting in the values gives us 1000 times 700 times 0 0.95 divided by 1000 times 1 1.3 plus 700 times 0 0.95 plus 6,000 times 0 0.8 plus 500 times 0 0.65. This gives us a value of 93.794. We can calculate the trips from zone 2 to zone 3 in a similar way. In this case, i is equal to 2 and j is equal to 3. The number of trips between zones 2 and zone 3, v2, 3, is therefore p2 times a3 times f2, 3 divided by the sum of the total attractions to zone j multiplied by the trips from zone 2 to zone j for each j. We can then go ahead and expand the denominator. Substituting in the values gives us 2,000 times 6,000 times 0 0.85 divided by 1,000 times 0 0.95 plus 700 times 1.3 plus 6,000 times 0 0.85 plus 500 times 0 0.95. This gives us a value of 1371.89. If we repeat this process for the other entries in the matrix, we would arrive at this final solution. To check that this solution satisfies the parameters of the question, we can see if the actual production figures, which is the sum of all the trip values in each row as predicted by the gravity model, matches the expected number of productions for each zone. We can see that this holds. We can also check if the attractions observed, which is the sum of the trip values in each column as predicted by the gravity model, matches the expected number of attractions for each zone we can see that this is not true. 
As such, we need to perform column and row factoring until a converged solution is reached. This is an iterative process. In this particular case, the attraction values are not as expected, so we start off with column factoring. We calculate the error ratio for each zone, which then becomes the column factor that is applied to all trips in that column. This ensures that the conservation of attractions is satisfied. For example, for zone 1, the column factor is equal to the expected attractions at zone 1 divided by the observed attractions. This is equal to 1000 divided by 866, which gives us 1.15. Presented here are the column factors for each of the zones. Let's apply these column factors to the first row of our trip matrix. T11 becomes scaled by the column factor for zone 1. T11 is therefore 183 times 1.15. T12 is equal to 94 multiplied by 0 0.99, which is the appropriate column factor. T13 is equal to 677 multiplied by 0 0.98 and T14 is equal to 46 times 0 0.982. As an aside, what I present here in this video contains rounding at various stages of the problem. When you are doing a trip distribution question by hand, you should ensure that you have at least four decimal places of accuracy throughout the process. The solution you get by hand can be slightly different to what you may get if you were doing it on a spreadsheet or computer software as complete values are used. Don't worry about this because as long as you are close to the values you get from a spreadsheet and are following the process described in the video, you are doing trip distribution correctly. This slide shows the trip matrix after the first iteration of column factoring. Now the attractions match up, but in doing this we have destroyed the conservation of productions. To resolve this, we need to perform row factoring. This scales the rows of the trip matrix in the previous slide. Let's step through the calculations for zone 1. The row factor is equal to the expected productions at zone 1 divided by the observed productions in the previous iteration. Substituting in the values, the row factor is equal to 1000 divided by 1013.054. This gives us a value of 0 0.987. Going through a similar process for the other zones yields the following results. Let's now apply the row factors to the first column of the trip matrix from the previous iteration. T11 becomes scaled by the row factor for zone 1. T11 is therefore 211.07 multiplied by 0 0.987. T21 is equal to 295.271 times 0 0.996. T31 is equal to 286.0438 multiplied by 1.0043. And finally, T41 is equal to 207. 0.6125 times 1.0041. Carrying through with row factoring for the entire matrix, we end up with the following results. At this point, we have now done one iteration of column factoring and row factoring as per the question. Note that the conservation of productions is satisfied and the actual attraction figures are very close to the expected values. This brings us to part B, 
When do we achieve a converged distribution pattern that we can use for the rest of the four-step planning process? And what criteria do we normally use? The process of trip distribution requires that we continue the iterative process of column and row factoring and comparing our calculated attraction and production values until they are sufficiently close to the expected values across all zones. We do this until the computed values are within a certain threshold, which is normally 1-2% to of the targeted value. The formula to calculate percentage difference is shown on this slide. This next slide shows the matrix we ended up with at the end of part A. The percentage difference is shown for all trips in red. For this particular example, a converged matrix has been achieved after one iteration of column factoring and row factoring. This concludes the worked example for the trip distribution. Thank you for watching this video and good luck with your studies.